didn't have what you needed or didn't fit in the group is also expensive. If you could always find the right people, you could lower costs significantly, get higher productivity from your entire staff, and grow your business using the best, most reliable, most highly skilled people. That in a perfect nutshell, is exactly what Seek Recruiting LLC can do for your business. That's S-E-E-C. That's because Seek Recruiting is talented professionals and careers connected. When you need skilled experts, Seek Recruiting LLC has them ready to go. Call 888-991-5833 to contact one of their highly skilled reps today. That's 888-991-5833 to contact one of their highly skilled reps today. Seek Recruiting, LLC, talented professionals and careers connected. All entrepreneurs, internet marketers, multi-level marketers, business people, social network gurus, social networkers, and advertisers meet on orusocial.com to maximize your traffic and get targeted traffic to increase your revenue and your company production. ORU is a powerful platform for entrepreneurs, networking, and social networking. Register today and grow your personal and business engagement. Don't forget, it's a social platform. So upload your profile and let's go. ORUsocial.com. That's ORUsocial.com. You put some action on the football game and scored a big win, right? But now you got to wait weeks to collect your cash. Not cool. Nothing more frustrating. That's why thousands of online players are making the switch to my bookie. MyBookie.lv is an industry-leading website. They offer real Vegas odds. I repeat, they offer real Vegas odds, not that play stuff. And they have incredible player props, live in-game action with odds, updated in real time, and, as I told you, fast, no-hassle payouts when you win, period. Here's what you need to do. Join now, and your first deposit will be matched dollar for dollar up to $1,000. You also get an extra 10% bonus when you sign up and deposit in the next 30 minutes. Use promo code PODCAST to activate that offer. Visit MyBookie today or call 844-900-BETS. That's 844-900-BETS. But don't forget, you have to use the promo code PODCAST to get the free loot. Open your account and start winning. Expert or rookie, you gotta check out MyBookie. Dot LV. Sign up today. Welcome back to the Doug Stewart Show. Throwback Thursday, 1981. Yeah. One of my favorite days of the week, man. The Doug Stewart Show. Throwback Thursday. Thank you so much for joining your boy. Uh, the number to the show you can call uh, live at 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show dot com. At around 11:15 a.m. Eastern Time, we have uh, uh, like our entertainment segment where we talk uh, some entertainment news. We uh, give shots out for birthdays for celebrities as well as Stewies. Anybody listening to the show, if you got a birthday coming up, shoot me a. Uh, an email at Doug at the Doug Show dot com or just post it in the chat room. So that comes up at about eleven fifteen AM Eastern time. So today is nineteen eighty one. Um some interesting things going on in nineteen eighty one. MTV began on August first. The first video uh all vid nerds know was Video Kill the Radio Star by the Buggles. The second was Pat Benatar's You Better Run. So MTV began in 1981. That's big. Videos? <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh. So I'm sure MTV was the first, you know, music video show. I'm trying to think. Was there anything else? No, it couldn't have been. Um, so 1981 was the first year of music videos. MTV, August 1st, uh, 1981. How cool was it? to put, like, a mini-movie, you know, behind the actual music. Like, who came up with that? (laughs) Whoever came up with that idea is an absolute genius. So that was 1981. Back in 1981 as well, man, oh, my gosh. You see the uh, little cover photo for today's show. The Smurfs were created in 1958. The Hanna-Barbera cartoon series brought them into American pop culture. All there, 
Although many fans think Smurf Et was the only female Smurf, there were actually two more, Nanny Smurf and Sasset Smurf. There were no, um, there was no Smurfina. I don't know what the hell that means. I remember Sasset Smurf. Sasset Smurf was like a little baby Smurf. And she came along at the end of the damn series or whatever. But this damn Nanny, this Nanny Smurf, I don't know who the hell a Nanny Smurf is. Y'all remember Nanny Smurf? <laughs> yeah. Uh, man, okay, so if you're a greenhorn and you, you've you seen the Smurfs, I'm sure, and you've heard about it, um, they even had a movie a couple of years ago. You're listening to the Doug Shure Show. Man, the Smurfs were a cultural phenomenon. I mean, so I was 11 years old, so Ryan was like 8 years old at the time. I'm like 4 years older than him. Um, man, the Smurfs were big. Like, I don't know who did their marketing or whatever, man, but it was a big, big deal when the Smurfs hit TV on Saturday mornings. Oh, yeah, if you're a greenhorn as well, the only times that we saw real cartoons, like we had the little afternoon cartoons back during that time after school, like you had little Tom and Jerry, um, maybe something like that. But for the most part, the cartoons only came on Saturday morning. There wasn't no Cartoon Network. There wasn't no, you know, Nick Jr. Um, there was nothing like that. We watched cartoons literally from 7 o'clock in the morning till 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday. On Saturday. We did. So it was a lot different. <laughs> it was a lot different. And when I tell you, me and my brothers would be propped up in front of the TV. Or me and my brother would be propped up in front of the TV at 7 a.m. in our drawers, in our underoos. We were. I'm just painting the picture. I'm just painting the picture. We'd be propped up in front of the TV, 7 a.m., in our drawers. We didn't wear no pajamas or anything like that, really, at that age. We just wore straight drawers. Um, watching cartoons, eating a big-ass bowl of cereal, and enjoying our morning, man. And enjoying our morning. And cartoons just came on back to back to back to back to back to back. All of the greatest cartoons. Hong Kong Fooey, uh, Scooby-Doo, uh, Laugh Olympics, all of that stuff, man. It, it was great. It was great. It was great being a kid back in 1981. Damn what you say, you greenhorns. <laughs> yeah. Man, it was great growing up during that era, man. So that's some stuff that was going on in 1981. 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at the Doug Let me read some of your messages here in the chat room on Spreaker.com. Thank you so much for being totally interactive to all of the Stewies. Um, T, I'm ready, Dub. He says, underoos, I had the Darth Vader. I think the underoos, we had, like, one pair of underoos. Like, I think Ryan had, like, the Batman underoos, and I had, like, maybe the Superman or Aquaman or something like that. Uh, if, you, if you're a greenhorn, once again, underoos were, were draws, was, were, were a matching T-shirt and draws combination. And usually they had like a superhero on it or something like that. I think it was based on all superheroes or whatever. It was just great stuff. I mean, you were a superhero as a kid in your draws? I mean, you can't beat that. From, um, from Griff, he says, Soul Train came on after the cartoons. You're exactly right. So late in the, in the morning, probably like 10 or 11 o'clock, you got more adult-themed cartoons, I would say. Like, like 11 o'clock, noon or something like that. That's when Fat Albert came on. And you know Fat Albert talked about all types of serious social issues, man. Crackheads, alcoholics, uh, fathers leaving their kids. <laughs> I think they even had an episode where an old man who once was a comedian used to drug girls and take the nootsie. Yeah. So then you had Fat Albert, and then later on you'd have, like, the music shows okay it weren't videos not really it was like american bandstand soul train that would come on like 12 one o'clock and that end up your saturday morning and then at that point uh me and ryan went outside and played marbles or something like that man i mean it was a great time from vince wright the big smoothie says tom and jerry speedy gonzalez woody woodpecker wow yeah afternoon cartoons fantastic so like in the afternoon you had 
and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. You had Tom and Jerry. What else? Then you had, like, Thundercats a little bit later. Um, but there were certain cartoons. If you go old, old school, if you old like me and talk about the early 70s, you had uh, Ultraman that used to come on late in the afternoon. Ultraman is kind of like the predecessor to the Power Rangers. Just trust me on this. It was real fire back in 1973. Uh, you had that type of stuff and uh, little afternoon school special type shows, man. It was great. It was fantastic. Um, let's see. From Ghost Dog, Smurf, Smurfette was definitely given. <laughs> Y'all wrong for this, man. Smurfette was definitely giving it up. All them damn Smurfs, she was probably riding raw. Come on, man. Stop it, man. Just stop it, man. Don't don't defame the Smurfette name. Don't do that, man. Don't do that. Smurfette uh, was the only Smurf, which was a very strange thing. I remember me and my brother talking about it. And you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. Why is there only one female Smurf around this place? Now, at the time, I probably wasn't thinking about, you know, uh, greedy Smurf and grouchy Smurf trying to get them some. I wasn't thinking on those lines. But in my mind at the time was thinking that, you know, if there's only one girl, I mean, how can all of the other Smurfs, you know, how can they have a girlfriend if there's only one girl? And what the Stewies are saying in the chat room is something very vulgar and disrespectful that they was just passing Smurfette around, man, like a, like a joint. Perverts. Um, from Loose Neck, who shot Junior Sire? Smurfette had that Baduka Dunk and them skills to pay the bills. <laughs> uh, y'all are just, I mean, come on, man. Come on, man. Vince Wright, ride raw Smurfette, blue or not. <laughs> Come on, man. Y'all better than this. Come on, now. A lot of y'all are my age group, man. Y'all my peers, man. Why would you disrespect such a uh, a simple part of our childhood and talking bad and talking about Smurfette was a hoe? Stop that. From Callboy J. I've never seen Nanny Smurf. I agree. I don't know who the hell Nanny Smurf is. I don't remember that. I'm, I'm going to go to YouTube for the great Nanny Smurf. But it says, I do remember they had that gay Smurf, Vanity Smurf. Yeah, I guess you're right. I guess Vanity was the gay Smurf. I didn't realize that. At the time, we were innocent. I didn't realize that. But technically, I guess you're right. We just thought Gan- uh, Vanity was kind of like... um. You know, it was like Morris Day or something like that. He just liked to have a mirror. He just liked to hang out. But we never thought, you know, we didn't know gay or hetero or anything like that back in, in 1981. But, yeah, I guess when you think about it, they had a gay smurf. They were progressive back in 1981. Wow. Wow. Smurfs were before their time. <laughs> the Smurfs were before their time. Ooh. They tackled progressive America and, and you know, LGBT conversations back in 1981. Who would have known? All right. Now we get back from the break, man. Um, How does this guy keep getting a job? I'll tell you who when we get back. Don't go away. The Doug Stewart Show. Hey, what's going on, Stu Nation? This is Vince Wright, the sports governor from the great state of Minnesota. want to thank you for listening to Sports Done Right every Wednesday here on SME. Make sure you keep it tuned here for me and all the other X-Squad affiliate shows on SME. Peace.
the alpha male.